This section is called the remainder and factor theorem. Remain the the remainder remainder and factor theorem theorem yeah. Uh, so first we're gonna start off with a theorem, kind of in understandable terms. Remainder. Theorem. Theorem. In the terms that I've decided to tell you guys, uh, this is what it is. Um, you can use synthetic, synthetic substitution, substitution to evaluate, evaluate a polynomial polynomial given an input value. So what this theorem is saying is um, you can use synthetic division to evaluate a polynomial rather than plugging in the number and simplifying. Uh, it's just another way to evaluate a polynomial. Uh, it'll be more clear in this example. Let's hope. Example. I'm going to say that this is example four, even though there is some in between. Four. Number four. You'll write that too. Um, so the instructions are use synthetic substitution to find P is polynomial evaluated at C to find P of C for the given polynomial P of X and given C. Uh, you'll you'll know it's synthetic, so it's using synthetic division really just to evaluate a polynomial. That's all it is. Uh, so the polynomial is p of x, which equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. And the c value that they give us is 4. So our goal, um, I'm just going to write small notes, goal is find p of c. So this is our goal. So what we could do, and what I'm going to do right now, just to show you, um, is we could plug in C to here. So we could do P of C equals, um, actually, what is C? C is 4. So P of 4 could be 4 cubed minus 2 times 4 squared minus 5 times 4 minus 7. 4 cubed is 64. Uh, 4 squared is 16 times 2. Negative 2 is negative 32. And then uh, 5 times 4 is negative 20. Negative 5 times 4 minus 7. So that is 64 minus 32 is 32. Minus 20 minus 7. Uh, minus 20 is 12, minus 7 is 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Yeah. So we, we could evaluate this uh, just by plugging in and we can get 5. Or we can use synthetic substitution, which is just plugging in our C value um, for the synthetic division and just do synthetic division. And then the remainder will be our uh, same thing that we get when we evaluate. That's what the theorem is telling us. We can use synthetic sub substitution, use the remainder as what our um, polynomial would give us. And so, uh, let's check to see if our things are fine. Uh, if it's in descending order, yeah. We don't need to put any placeholders in, so we can just 1, um, uh, negative 2, negative 5, 
negative 7, and then just do synthetic division. So we'll bring down the 1, 1 times 4 is 4, um, 4 times, or no, I'm just adding. So this is 2, this becomes 8, so this is 3, 12, 12 minus 7 is 5. So our remainder is 5, but the theorem tells us that um, we just use the remainder as what we get out when we evaluate. So P of 4 is 5. Same thing. Yay! The light went out on my phone. Doesn't matter. You can still see. Um, don't worry about it. So these are our answers. When, you'll, when you're doing these problems, you won't have to do all this stuff. Uh, you won't have to go 64 minus 32 minus 20 minus 7. You can just do the synthetic division, which is a lot simpler math, uh, and get your answer. A lot less room for mistakes, I think. Uh, yeah, so one more example for that. Example. So... Same instructions, and p of x is 1 minus 7x minus 4x squared plus x cubed, and our c value is given to be 6. Uh, so first of all, what we need to do is arrange this in descending order for the synthetic division. So that'll be p of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x, we're just flipping it around plus 1, this is a positive 1. Now we're ready to do synthetic substitution so we have our c value which is 6 and then the coefficients 1, negative 4, negative 7, and 1 bring down 1, that becomes 6, this is 2, 12, um, 5 and 30, so it's 31. So, by our theorem, P of 6 equals the remainder when we do synthetic substitution, 31. And it's that easy, and it's quick too, I think. I think it's quick. Uh, and that's that. New theorem, yay! So, this one is called the factor theorem. What if it's called the X Factor Theorem? That would be awesome! But it's not! Factor Theorem. Um, yeah. So, I'm just going to write it down, then I'm going to explain what it means. A polynomial, P of X, has X minus R as a factor if and only if r is a root of the equation p of x equals zero that means the polynomial set equal to zero um, so what is this what is, what does this mean what does this mean what is this ha 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 so, this means that x minus r, if you're given an r value, x minus r is a factor if and only if p of r equals zero. When you plug in r, to your polynomial and you evaluate it, you get out in zero. That's what, that's what that's saying. Um, so the point of this is to use the factor theorem. So I'm going to show you how to use the factor theorem uh, in this example. Example. Uh, this one's number five. This one's number six. So the instructions will be um, use the factor theorem. Oh, huh, how appropriate. Theorem to tell 
if x minus r is a factor. So you're going to be given an r value, and you're going to have to tell whether x minus r is a factor by using the theorem, because the theorem tells you whether it's a factor or not. Uh, so, in this case, instead of x, it'll be t, and we'll have t plus 1. Is t plus 1 a factor of p of t equals t to the fifth plus t to the fourth plus t to the third plus t squared plus t plus one. Ugh. So what are we doing? Um, we're going to see if this is a factor of this polynomial. And what I'm going to say is use negative one. Why do I use negative one? Well, in the theorem, it talked about x minus r. Uh, it's kind of the same thing as when we did y minus k equals a times x minus h. You kind of take the opposite sign of what's there. So we have x minus r. And in this case, um, it would be t minus minus 1 if we wanted it in the correct form. So we take a minus 1. Um, I'm just going to write a note right here, actually. So if you have x plus r, kind of like we have t plus 1, uh, use the opposite, use negative r or the opposite of r. And in this case, instead of having a plus 1, we use a minus 1. That's, that's all I'm saying. So this note is what I'm using right here. And the theorem says if I plug it in, and I get out zero, then this is a factor. So I'm going to plug this in. If I get out zero, then this is a factor. So let's see that. P of negative 1 equals negative 1 to the fifth plus negative 1 to the fourth plus negative 1 to the third plus negative 1 to the second plus negative 1 plus 1. Well, right away, Right away, right away, that cancels out. Uh, so this is zero, and then I can do. It's a odd power, so this just becomes negative one. It's an even power, so it gets rid of that negative plus one. Odd power minus one. Even power plus one, plus zero. So that goes away from that, and that goes away with that. Yay! We have zero. So, by our theorem, p, um, sorry, so, by our theorem, so, t plus 1 is a factor, and that's my answer. That's, that's what the question was asking for. Is it a factor? And we checked, yes it is. Those problems are really easy.